Hey, welcome back. This is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. And this video is a follow-up to last week's video on parallel processing of drums. And we have the same song here. And we'll take a quick listen to what we have already. So in case you missed that video, um, we've got the drums all feeding through this drum bus here. But we also have that simultaneously routed through a second aux that we're heavily compressing and we're blending the two together. So I'm going to mute this second one as it plays and mute it and then unmute it so you can hear the difference. So the compressed track is over the top but blended in with the original with no compression on there. Pretty nice little sound. So there's other things you can do parallel processing on, and today we'll talk about bass. So we'll add the bass into the mix, and let me just play the whole mix so you can kind of hear the context of the song. Okay, so got stereo guitars, bass, drums, a little organ, you know, pretty basic, straightforward. So here's the bass part, and we'll solo that out. If we look back over here in the edit window, we'll see we've got the bass track here. Got a lot of processing on it already, and it sounds pretty good in the mix, but let's just explore some things we can do. So we'll come in, I'll zoom in down here, and we're going to duplicate this track. And it's going to give me a window that says... Oh, that was the playlist, sorry. <laughs> hey, way to go. We're going to right-click on bass and then duplicate the entire track. That was duplicating a playlist. So we're going to duplicate everything, OK. And once it comes up, now we have two bass tracks. So we'll come back over here, and they both show up here as well. Now I'm going to get rid of all of these plugins that I already have from the first track, because I don't want something identical. I want to change it a bit. And this is a trick I learned from a lot of folks down in Nashville, actually. Surprisingly, in country music, they'll, a lot of times they'll parallel process the bass. A lot of times it's a direct bass, and they'll process that signal, but they'll also d double it over and add some distortion, and that allows it to bite through. But it's not this super heavy metal distortion that you may be thinking of. It's uh, pretty subtle, but added in, it can cause the bass to stand out and, and have a little bite to it. So we're going to come in here, and I'm going to add the distortion plug-in from... Um, with, that's new with Pro Tools 8. There are things like Trash, which is a great one. A um, good buddy of mine uses that all the time. But we're going to take a listen to this uh, by itself. Okay, so that, you know, we'll probably would want to dial that in more in real life. But let's just see what it sounds like blended together. So there's the clean bass. down the drive a little bit. Here's what it sounds like again by itself. So again, not pretty by itself, just like the drum track over here isn't pretty by itself. Of course I <laughs> muted everything. Let's try that again. So that's not pretty by itself, but it adds a lot in the context of a mix. And again, that's what it's all about. So let's listen all together, everything, with this distorted bass. And you might hear that the bass kind of uh, cuts through a little more.
So as you can see, I pushed that all the way up past zero to where it sounds like this soloed. But it didn't sound that over the top in the course in, in the context of the mix. Now it was subtle, but we're gonna play it again. I'll play it once with the distorted bass and then go back and mute it on the same section. So let's take a listen again. And now without. Add it back in. So while, yes, it adds a little volume to the bass, it adds this definition. Like I could hear the pick on the bass a little bit more. I could hear the attack of the notes more. Listen to that one more time. And I know this is kind of annoying to start and stop, but I want you to hear the difference here. Notice that when the bass is playing by itself muted with the, with the distorted part muted, you can hear the bass and it sounds good, but it's a little softer and there, you can't hear the attack as well. Listen to it here. Now we're going to add this distortion and there's a little more bite, a little more aggression to the attack of those notes. Suddenly sounds a little more like a bass guitar and less like you're not sure if that could be bass or maybe somebody played it on a keyboard because it's kind of got that little muffled sound. So and you can achieve that by just adding some distortion to the bass track itself, but then you lose some of the body because distortion tends to thin things out and um, take away a lot of that low end bass. So on guitars, it works because you're going to roll off the bass anyway. But on a bass guitar itself, it is a really good idea to double that out and not mess with the original tone and then blend it in to taste. So that last example, it may have had a little too much distortion still uh, because you could hear the buzz just a little bit, but we dial that back just a few more dB and I think we'd be really onto something. So I hope that helps. I'm probably gonna deal with vocals soon, although I'm not sure because I don't do parallel processing on vocals a whole lot, but there are situations where it might be helpful. If you have questions and you're watching this elsewhere like YouTube or uh, blip.tv or other cool video sites head over to homestudiocorner.com you can leave a comment there and i'll be happy to help you thanks again for watching really appreciate it